Hello, my name is Depayman, and since well, I'm bringing you another, well, another video, it's not necessarily a movie review, but this is a new segment I want to start on my channel. It's, well, every Saturday, I'm going to be posting a top 10 of something. Anything, you guys leave in the comments, you guys could suggest it, and I could do it, or I could think of it on my own. For the first one, I thought a lot about this for a while, maybe about half an hour, trying to figure out what topic I should do, and I spent another half an hour figuring out my list. This list is going to be the top 10 comic book movies, in my personal opinion. This is the time where I can be completely 100% biased and give you my 100% opinion on my favorite comic book movies ever made. So if you do not agree with this list, feel free to leave in the comments. If you agree with this list, like the video and leave your list in the comment section down below. A little um preference before I start this video. There aren't that many comic book movies. I actually had to look it up. There's only maybe about a hundred real live action comic book movies, and I stuck to that. That was my criteria. Live action comic book movies. I know there's some good animated ones, including some really good Batman ones, but I stuck to that. So let's begin. So number ten, I have Kick Ass. Now this movie was a weird movie coming out. It was just coming out in theaters. It was about this I don't really know. It was a weird movie, and the movie did what it should have done, and it made this like 15, 16 year old kid they portrayed in the movies, even 17, I don't know, kick ass. And they did too, but it wasn't just about him, it was about everyone else stepping up to be a superhero, such as a very, very, very good performance by Chloe Moretz, and an actually good performance by Nick Cage too. So that's why kick ass is number 10. So my number 9th pick might be a very controversial pick. But I'll explain to you why. Man of Steel, the new Superman movie that came out. And a lot of people were thinking, Superman? Original? Superman 2? What? Why is Man of Steel? Superman was a, a, an amazing movie. It changed superhero movies forever. But then Superman. But you never really got a chance to see Superman kick butt. You got a little bit in that Superman 2 where he fought three people. He didn't get it. Superman 3 was okay, Superman 4 was crap, and there was no action in Superman Returns. This is the first time that you could see Superman kick some butt and actually have an opponent where you could destroy things, and you got that movie, along with some character drama too, which was I thought well put in. Well, very well put in. So I very much enjoyed this, that's why Man is Field number 9. So number 8, I have a very underrated superhero movie, it's actually one of the letter, lesser known superhero, it's actually the least known, or one of the least known superhero movies on my list, Hellboy 2 The Golden Army. This movie was such a surprise for me seeing it in theaters and then watching it again a couple years ago, and just realizing how good of a superhero movie that is, this, there is, they perfectly blended action and comedy, a lot funnier too than the first one, a lot funnier. And you would expect from this, they blended action, comedy, Guillermo del Toro makes a very visually stunning movie, the script is airtight, Ron Perlman gives an excellent performance, very very good, awesome just all around, just the monsters too in that movie are just... So that's why Hellboy is number 8. So for number 7, I have Spider-Man 2. And this is my favorite Spider-Man movie that has come out, it's better than... Amazing Spider-Man, Spring Spider-Man, and of course it's better than Spider-Man 3. This movie, it it got Spider-Man right, in my opinion. It gave him a villain that had realism, Dr. Op. They perfectly portrayed him, and then they gave Spider-Man realism, realism where he's just trying to be normal, so he gave it up, and then he has to step back up to save Mary Jane. And I thought that was brilliantly executed. It's one of my favorite superhero... I'm dumb. It's one of my favorite... Like Marvel movies, if I can say, is a very big surprise, in my opinion, because I really like the first one. I really like the first one, and this one just surpassed it completely. So that's why Spider-Man number seven. So for number six, you guys might be wondering why isn't this higher up on your list? Well, I think that The Dark Knight Rises at number six did its job perfectly, but there's five other comic book movies I found better. This was the best possible conclusion, or one of the best possible conclusions we could have gotten to one of the best, most epic trilogies ever put to film. This movie had a realistic villain, a menacing villain, an interesting villain, interesting plot, a character 
He's so humanized in this movie that it's unbelievable. And you see more of Christian Bale, and that's why I really thought shined in this movie. I thought that the Christian Bale aspect was honestly better than the uh, just regular Batman aspect. They just made him seem more human, have, having to conquer his fear and whatnot. And that's why Dark Knight is number six. So, for number five, we have it's such a surprise movie coming out in 2008. Just imagine coming into Iron Man at number five and thinking it was directed by an actor starring Robert Downey Jr., who's this guy who, Tropic Thunder, Kiss Kiss, Kiss, Kiss Bang Bang, had did not really have that good of a history, but then comes into Iron Man, and the movie's awesome. You can't ask for that better. It was brilliantly directed. It just put, like, it put Iron Man to the screen the way we wanted. And even though 2 sucked, and 3 was good, but not to the standards of Iron Man, the original one, Iron Man still holds up as one of the best comic movies to date. So for number four, I was flip-flopping between um, the first and the sequel, but in overall, just thinking about it and watching them again, I personally like X-Men 2, X-Men United. Yeah, X-Men 2, X-Men United. Oops. Sure. Um, I personally like that better than the first one. It was it's just centered more on centered more on um, Logan. As Wolverine, and I almost put Wolverine as um, number ten, knocking out Kickass, but I like Kickass better. But X Men Two, it was just such a good superhero movie, and it was such it was such a different, different sequel than just the X Men, and it just changed how the next three movies, not the next movies, it just changed the X Men movies forever. These the first two, and then you got three with CG Patrick Stewart. So I can't really explain it that well, because I just love it. So number four definitely goes to X-Men 2. So for number three, we have the most, po not really the most, but this is the, uh, the best, like the ideal superhero movie, The Avengers. You could not have asked for a better version of The Avengers. It was perfect. The characters, they were so interesting and so well portrayed. It was awesome. And the action, it was non-stop action too, and it was interesting. The villain, Loki, was awesome. Tom Hiddleston is the best possible person now in my mind thinking about it for Loki. The, the only reason why Avengers was that good was because of its characters and that's why, I'm sorry, not yet, Josh Whedon, perfect director for the Avengers, no doubt. That's why the Avengers is number three. So number two, I am going to go with the Dark Knight. What? It's not number one? There's a movie better than that, and if you haven't already get it, just real quick, if you can guess number one right now, at the time frame that the video is right now, say number one time frame right now, and then guess it. I I don't know. It's just Dark Knight was the best Batman movie ever made. It's one of the best movies ever made. One of the best acting performances ever given by an actor, Heath Ledger. Uh, rest in peace. He would have been such a star. He already was a star. He would have been so much better in his career. You can't have asked for better than that. A realistic Batman, a realistic um, villain, an incredibly well-acted villain, such a well-just-directed movie. Christopher Nolan, this he should have won an Oscar for this movie for direction. By far, that's why Dark Knight is number two. Number one, the big guns, the big number one comic book movies. And if you had already guessed it, Number nine, number one is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. This beat out The Dark Knight, this beat out Avengers, this beat out my whole list. Wanna know why? Because it was awesome. It was a video game movie done right, and it wasn't even a video game, but it had so many aspects of retro video games, so much comic book isk like put into this movie. It was amazing, so brilliantly directed, quick zooms by Edgar Wright, done right. Awesome action, mind-boggling action. Michael Sarah, you would not take him for an action star. It's he is, he's such well choreographed. It was so funny too, and just so visually stunning. Edgar Wright, this is one of my most favorite movies of all time. If you can't tell, Edgar Wright just does this so perfectly. I can't even explain how much I love this movie. I will make a review for this stuff soon, and that's why Scott Pilgrim is number one. So thank you all for watching, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to, 
That is my top 10 comic book movies. If you have any suggestions for top 10s, leave it in the comment section down below. If you agree with my list, like I already said at the beginning of the video. If you don't agree with it, feel free to dislike and leave some feedback and be like, Dark Knight should be number one, Scott Pilgrim should be on the list. Where's the Wolverine? Where's Men in Black? Where's Blade? Blade wasn't even that good, actually. But why isn't the Avengers number two? I can understand everyone's point of views. This is my personal list, my preferences. So thank you. I'm out. Peace.